I watch a lot of movies. Do you watch, you don't watch your own movies, do you? Uh, those are the only films that I watch all the time. <laughs> Tom Cruise, at the height of his career, earned an incredible $100 million from just one movie. In 2022, he soared to new heights with Top Gun Maverick, earning another $100 million. Known for his astronomical fees, Cruise is the only actor who can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Marvel in DC, and he's worth every cent. In the 90s, he was a global heartthrob. He once wished he wasn't so handsome, hoping people would focus more on his acting skills. Would you go bigger in this one than in... I... I can't tell you. <laughs> this good-looking star, who made a name for himself in Hollywood at the age of 24, could have easily relied on his looks, but he chose to earn acclaim through hard work. He performs his own stunts, flies planes, climbs cliffs, and does cliffhanging car chases, drawing audiences to cinemas to see what else he can do. Would you parasail over an erupting volcano? You know, I, I've been to a, an erupting volcano. <laughs> Today, let's explore the journey of this top Hollywood icon. Born in Syracuse, New York on July 3, 1962, Cruz was the second of four children and the only boy. His father, Thomas, was an electrical engineer, and his mother, Mary, a special education teacher. Despite their respectable jobs, the family struggled financially. Cruz grew up in poverty, dreaming of becoming a priest. His father moved the family frequently for work, often between the U.S. and Canada, leading to 15 school changes in 14 years. In 1971, his father landed a job with the Canadian Armed Forces, and the family relocated to Beacon Hill in Ottawa. It was at Robert Hopkins Public School in Ontario, where Cruz discovered his passion for drama, participating in plays under his drama teacher's guidance. A primary school drama festival performance, where he and six boys improvised a song, praised by organizer Val Wright, ignited his love for acting. After his mother left his father in sixth grade, she took Cruz and his sisters back to the U.S. Cruz had a poor view of his father, whom he later described as a bully, in 1978, following his mother's marriage to his stepfather, Jack South, Cruz attended St. Francis Seminary in Cincinnati, Ohio, on a church scholarship. However, he was expelled for drinking and his passion for acting, leading him back to high school. There, he was a midfielder on the football team, but got kicked off for drinking beer before a game. He then shifted his focus to acting in school plays. Cruz graduated from Glen Ridge High School in New Jersey in 1980. At 18, he moved to New York with his mother and stepfather's blessing to pursue acting. He initially worked as a waiter while auditioning. He soon signed with a top talent agency and landed a small role in Endless Love in 1981. His next role was in Taps, playing the brave Sergeant David Sean. In 1983, Cruz appeared in The Outsiders, and that same year, he starred in All the Right Moves and Risky Business, the latter becoming a global box office hit. These films marked the start of his illustrious career. In 1985, he starred in Ridley Scott's Legend, becoming a teen idol. The film, though not a box office success, received multiple award nominations. Top Gun in 1986 made Cruz a Hollywood superstar. The film, with a budget of $15 million, grossed $357 million worldwide. For the flight scenes, Cruz underwent intense training and earned a fighter pilot license. The film was also a unique recruiting tool for the U.S. Navy, leading to a significant increase in enlistments. That year's trendiest outfit was Cruz's pilot trio, Ray-Ban sunglasses, a flight jacket, and a motorcycle. In 1988, Cruz starred in Cocktail, a box office success but critically panned. However, he redeemed himself with Rain Man at the end of the year. The film, initially slow at the box office, became a sensation, topping the charts and winning multiple Oscars. In 1989, Cruz's role in Born on the Fourth of July earned him a Golden Globe and an Oscar nomination, contributing to the film's top 10 global box office ranking. In 1990, People magazine named him the sexiest man alive. That year, he met Nicole Kidman on the set of Days of Thunder, leading to a marriage. After a tragic ectopic pregnancy, the couple adopted two children, Isabella Jane in 1992 and Connor in 1995. At the height of Tom Cruise's career, he was not just a box office sensation, his striking looks also dominated the scene. 
The only rival to his status as Hollywood's leading heartthrob was Brad Pitt, who rose to fame with his roles in Thelma and Louise, A River Runs Through It, and Legends of the Fall. In 1994, Cruz and Pitt teamed up in Interview with the Vampire, a film adaptation of Anne Rice's 1976 novel. Initially, Rice was not in favor of Cruz for the role, preferring Julian Sands. However, after seeing the film, she spent $7,000 on a two-page ad in Variety magazine to praise his performance and apologize for her earlier skepticism. The film was a hit, earning $223 million at the box office and ranking ninth globally that year. It also garnered multiple Oscar and Golden Globe nominations. 1996 was a pivotal year for Cruz with the release of Mission Impossible and Jerry Maguire. These films shifted his image from a mere sex symbol to a top action star. In Mission Impossible, which cost over $80 million, Cruz took on dual roles as the lead actor and producer at just 34 years old. The film broke the opening day record with $11.8 million in box office sales and premiered on May 22, 1996. Cruz opted for a large share of the box office revenue over a $20 million paycheck, ultimately earning $70 million. Jerry Maguire was another box office success, with critics lauding Cruz's performance. The film received five Oscar nominations, including Best Actor for Cruz, marking his second nomination. It also earned three Golden Globe nominations, with Cruz winning Best Actor in a Musical or Comedy. At the peak of his popularity, he even turned down a role in The Matrix. In 1999, Cruz explored new acting territories, starring with his wife Nicole Kidman in Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut. Later that year, he appeared in Paul Thomas Anderson's Magnolia, taking on a rare supporting role. His performance earned him nominations for the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor and the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. The following year, he returned in Mission Impossible 2, directed by John Woo. The film featured a memorable scene of Cruz climbing a rock face barehanded in Dead Horse Point State Park, Utah. Helicopter very close to the town and the blade, you can see the blade on, on, on the helicopter. It's a very close to the town's head, you know, just like fun, 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 you know? and I couldn't bear to watch the monitor. So I was shaking and close my eye, keep praying, uh, God, please, you know, uh, keep him safe and help him, you know, kind of thing. With only a climbing harness and no safety net. Despite suffering a shoulder tear during the stunt, Cruz maintained his composure and smile for the close-up shots. The film was a box office triumph, grossing $547 million and becoming the highest grossing film of 2000. This marked the beginning of Cruz's journey of daring feats, including hanging off the side of an airplane during takeoff, secured by safety ropes. In 2001, Cruz and Kidman announced their divorce. He then began a new relationship with Penelope Cruz, his co-star in Vanilla Sky. In 2002, he starred in Steven Spielberg's Minority Report, a sci-fi action film based on Philip K. Dick's novel. The film was one of the year's most popular, ranking 10th in global box office. In 2003, Cruz starred in The Last Samurai, which was well-received and earned him another Golden Globe nomination. The next year, he appeared in Michael Mann's Collateral, playing Vincent, a role that was highly praised and considered one of the most terrifying villains in film history. In 2005, he collaborated again with Spielberg in War of the Worlds, which earned $591 million at the box office, ranking fourth globally for the year and netting him over $100 million in earnings. That same year, he was voted the favorite male movie star by the People's Choice Awards. Tom Cruise, Hollywood's Golden Goose, starred in 10 movies over a decade with nine of them grossing over $100 million each. From 1986 to 2006, out of 20 movies he headlined, 14 ranked in the top 10 of the global box office for their respective years, and 19 were in the top 20. Adjusted for inflation, all 20 movies earned over $100 million in North America. However, after two decades of success, Cruz's public image and appeal suffered a significant decline in 2005 due to a PR crisis and negative press. This downturn was compounded by disagreements over profit sharing and production visions, leading to a split with Paramount Pictures. In 2007, Cruz took on a rare supporting role in Lions for Lambs, which unfortunately underperformed commercially. The next year, he appeared in Tropic Thunder alongside Ben Stiller, Jack Black, and Robert Downey Jr., earning a Golden Globe nomination for his role as Les Grossman. On December 25, 2008, 
Cruz starred in Valkyrie, a film he produced, achieving commercial success. In 2010, he co-starred with Cameron Diaz in Night and Day, but the film received lukewarm reviews and box office results. It was Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol that marked his comeback, demonstrating his star power. The fourth movie in the series, made on a $145 million budget, grossed nearly $700 million worldwide and ranked fifth in the global box office for the year. At 49, Cruz performed extraordinary stunts, including climbing the Burj Khalifa at around the 130th floor and scaling its 828-meter spire, all without the aid of green screens. In Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation, Cruz continued to stun audiences with his daring stunts. In one notable scene, he clung to the exterior of a military cargo plane during takeoff, a feat challenging even with safety measures. Although it didn't surpass the previous film's box office, it was still highly praised and ranked 8th globally for the year. The Mummy in 2017 faced both box office and critical disappointments. However, Mission Impossible Fallout in 2018 became his most successful film to date. The stunts were riskier than ever. For realism, he performed a halo jump from 7,000 meters, skydiving 106 times to capture the perfect shot, a first for any actor on camera. Halo jumping, a military technique for evading detection, is among the most dangerous skydiving methods. Before Cruise, no one had ever done it on camera. That clip there, we just saw you doing a, what's called a halo jump, yep. which is jumping from... Very high altitude, and we open low, so... Well, what does very low mean? Like, like close what? to the building? Like what? Yeah, close to the building. <laughs> Another scene required him to jump between buildings, resulting in a broken ankle. His dedication helped the film gross over $790 million. In May 2020, it was reported that Cruise would film a sci-fi movie in outer space, confirmed by NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. The plan included shooting scenes at the International Space Station, though details remain under wraps. Meanwhile, in May 2021, Russia's space agency announced a similar project, planning to send an actress and a director to the ISS in October 2021 to film a space-themed movie. At 60, an age when many consider retirement, Cruz continues to excel. In 2022, he returned as Pete Mitchell in Top Gun Maverick, also serving as its producer. At the Cannes Film Festival premiere, he received an honorary Palm d'Or. The film was a critical and commercial success, surpassing the original in acclaim. It shattered box office records, grossing over $1488 billion worldwide, becoming one of the highest grossing films in North American history and Cruz's most successful film. At 60, he outshone every Marvel and DC movie released in 2022. Undoubtedly, he remains one of the world's most bankable actors. I've always believed that if you're passionate about something, you should give it your all. Half measures won't get you very far. It's that commitment to your passion that leads to success. I love what I do. I take great pride in what I do. And I can't do something halfway, three quarters, nine tenths. If I'm going to do something, I go all the way. In this industry, you're going to face rejection, failure, and setbacks. It's not about avoiding these challenges, but about how you rise up each time you're knocked down. That resilience, that refusal to give up is what defines us. When you have to cope with a lot of problems, you're either going to sink or you're going to swim. Taking risks is part of life and certainly part of making films. I've always been drawn to roles and projects that challenge the status quo, that push the boundaries. It's in those moments of uncertainty that you find your greatest potential. Every role, every project is a learning experience. I'm constantly looking for ways to challenge myself, to step out of my comfort zone. That's how you grow, not just as an actor, but as a person. Filmmaking is a collaborative effort it's about bringing together the best of everyone's talents to create something truly memorable. I've always admired the creativity and dedication of the people I work with. Staying true to yourself, to your values, is crucial in this business. It's easy to get lost in the fame and the accolades, but at the end of the day, your integrity is what you have to live with. Reflecting on his career, Cruz's journey from a charming young actor to a versatile performer and top action star affirms his status as a true superstar.